Ahoy! Can you hear me? Does it sound okay? We're back. Um, the last DOS stream happened on... Hang on. Uh, I don't remember. I think last week, or maybe before then. Wait, Twitch would tell me. Twitch, can you tell me? I just need to give some context. Um, for people watching the VODs. If there's people watching the VODs, I don't know. So let's go to my Twitch channel and have a quick look. Yeah, so 11 days ago. Yes, hi VOD folks. So where we last left off, <coughs> I'm sure you like that sound. When we ran our bot, Hey Johnny, what's up? When I ran our bot, um, we have some code here that just makes it say hello world. I'm not gonna cough on you. What? Dad? Elephant? Anyway. If we go to bot.cpp, um, you can see it prints my test, which is an external variable, and then it runs the assembly print command. And then in assembly, we define my test. But when we try to print it, um, it just, it does nothing. It, uh, it prints smiley faces. And so what I did next is I'm, this is kind of in past tense. I did this yesterday. I created an example program. Um, so I'll walk you through this. We have our simple program and it prints hello world. And then it does the same thing and it prints um, and a, the assembly definition. Then it calls print NASM, which prints the assembly definition. So if we do build and then test, we get the same issue. And then if we go um, ASM.ASM, it's the same thing. And I disassembled the stuff to compare it. So if we look at main.disassembly, um, it looks, you know, normal. It moves the offset print text printf um yep then in the second one it does that but with print asm format nice um the assembly code is somewhat similar you know offset print asm whatever however if we open this with our cutter tool I think I already have this project, yeah. I did a little bit of reverse engineering. Um, if we find the main function, you can see I have the functions here, print C, and print C pushes 0x a6, and then calls print F. Print C assembly prints, pushes 22 and calls print F. These are relative to the data segment but print NASM, that pushes just two. Um, if I can find it. Oh yeah, print NASM. I don't know what just happened there, but it looks like it kind of mangled things because in a second ago it said print two or whatever. Did I just write over it or something? I don't know. Anyway, it's not putting the same values. So if we look over at the hex dump and we find hello world. Uh, 
it would be in strings. Um, please, oh, I'm supposed to search here. Hello world. You'll see that hello world is at one F E two. And when print C does it, it prints, it pushes a six. Um, and print C assembly pushes 22. So like a six, 22. So one F E two a six. That'd be in the hex dump. Whoops. One F E two a zero zero a six. And it's not going to let me do that here. But if we look at the memory map, uh, let's close cutter. Okay, I guess it, it won't let me close it. Whatever, fine. Uh, desktop bot drive C code SM what? It's in capitals. So if we look at the memory map, you can see here we have all these groups. And if we look for the hello, the print text here, that's in one FC, A6. So when we go to print C assembly, one uh, FC, um, A6 here for print C. And if we look for the NASM stuff, that's 1FC0022. And that's 22 there. So these are the correct offsets, but NASM over here is just pushing two instead of 22, um, which is a bit confusing, right? That's 32 bytes off. Well, what's interesting here is that if we look at, um, um, let's see, if we look at the data section here, where we put the string in, um, it starts uh, at one FE in the segment, and then two, and that's where the const data goes. So if we go to our hex dump, which again, doesn't use segments. Um, but if we go to strings, one F E two. One F E two. One F E two. That kind of makes sense. But if you look up here, it has one F C. So Whatcom is using 1FC as the segment in the data segment, but NASM is using 1FE. And so what I found out the hard way is that we have to put the segments at the top of the file and then set the group. And NASM will refer to things based on that. Otherwise you have to write push print as some form an WRT D group with regard to. So let's try and fix the bot based on that. I don't know if that made any sense, but the short answer is that NASM is using the wrong offsets because um, it thinks the data segment is different to what it is. So let's go to our bot. Let's open up the file so I can actually edit it. Code bot vim bot.cpp. Oh, sorry, it would be hello.assembly. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the section definitions up here. And I think it was group, D group, which has text and data. And then we'll write here section text. And then we'll write here section data. 
and that should fix it. Oops. What? Okay. So let's see if this fixes it. It does. Look, it's fixed. Um, I had some other notes here I want to talk about. Oh yeah, um, I found out that you can get the symbols from Whatcom's symbol map files using dwarf dump. So I'll show that now. If we go to drive C code, uh, ASM what, and we do dwarf dump, um, test.sim, it tells us all the symbols. Um, and as far as I know, that's like the only way to read these files because um, you can't really, I think only open Whatcom's debugger handles dwarf files and GDB, but we're not running GDB in DOS. And the other thing is that in DOSBox, it caches the directories by default. I'm not too sure why, um, but I've disabled that. I turned on no dear cache and I'll do that here. And that way, when I edit something, no cache here. If I edit something outside DOSBox, it'll show up in DOSBox. So like, if I'm just in C drive code right now, um, and I do C drive code, and I dump the readme file here, um, if I do DRR now, you can see the readme file because uh, it doesn't cache it. So that's, that's what I've caught up with. So let's try and do some programming today. Let's try and make things echo. So we're going to have to... Uh, Go back here, drop our printing stuff. And here we will do move AX zero, push AX, push AX, incoming I S. This is our format string. So we're gonna have to push AX and then I think DX, AX is gonna be the length Oh, that would be DX. Yeah, push AX, DX. Um, then push the print format. Oh, it might be backwards. So I think it's um, DX, AX. We can also just push print format directly. We don't need to move it into a register first. Then we're going to pop AX to get the return value. There we go. And then in the bot code, we're just going to find um, this junk and remove it. All right, let's try making that. And seeing if it works, this should ideally echo things at least. Cannot set up packet buffers, unable to connect to host, cleaning up socket. Um, I didn't expect that. Why not? Uh, init. Did I not init the stack? Oh, I run set up socket there. Unable to connect to host. Um, I'm pretty sure you should be able to do that unless the server isn't running. It is running and now it has hung. We're going to have to look at that, the hangs in a minute. Um, what, why does this, why? Um, I 
unable to connect to host. Can we connect to it locally? Wait, can we use like netcat? MTCP LNET 127. Or is it 10.0.2.15667? Is that it? It's 2.2, okay. 2.2. Yeah, so we can connect from inside DOS, but it just says it can't send up packet buffers. Why is that? I've never hit this error before. Let's check out our old bot code just to see if I haven't accidentally missed something. Also, what's this test thing? No, we can get rid of the test stuff. We don't need that. Actually, the test code here should be a good reference since it should ideally work. Set up socket, clean up socket. Does the test program work? Let's run the test. Don't tell me something's like, just broken things, um, test. No, it is talking properly with the outside world. Um, so we run setup socket, uh, pass it. Maybe we need to like W make clean it. Maybe there's just been too much junk happening. I think Kaz died. He stopped responding. What a strange man. That dude, help. H-E colon colon, semicolon colon P. You trying to write some C there, mate. You are back, where were you? Could not set up packet buffers. Do we have a log for this? Why is this not working? All right, hang on a second. It can't set up the packet buffers. Packet buffers, is that something I did? I don't think that was me. What the H? Mm -hmm. Let's set a longer timeout perhaps, maybe it's a timeout thing. Although I don't check the return codes of init stack or pass env. I guess this stream, we should figure out why it's hanging too. It doesn't hang for anyone else except me. Because this hanging is getting annoying. Okay, could not set up packet buffers. All right. So it's freezing even if we just run clean up socket. What if we don't clean up the socket? Do we need to clean up the socket? Is clean up socket hanging? I mean, that seems like that solves our problem kind of. Clean up socket is causing issues maybe. Oh, I can see why that would be causing issues. Maybe. 
it looks like I'm in a situation where if the socket isn't valid when we do clean up socket or free socket or whatever, it will freeze up and stuff, but that's fine. Who cares? We'll just worry about that later. Um, but now it's saying it cannot set up packet buffers. So let us go to our MTCP code. And let's do AG setup packet buffers. Case insensitive, please. It does not say anything. What if I just put it here? Which file is saying could not set up? All right, TCP lib utils.cpp. Could not set up init error message, packet buffers. Do we not have enough memory? Why is the buffer is not working? Buffer in it. This was working last week, wasn't it? Sorry, did, did something happen? I came back all triumphant, having slain this weird bug, and immediately I get this. So it uses malloc, and it tries to allocate memory. And it would fail if it could not malloc packet buffers times packet buffer length. Um, okay, how much is that memory? Let's put a printf here. Uh, printf malloc i equals um, we'll just put a failed there and then we'll put the size um, which will be that. Okay. Let's see if that helps. That should tell us something. 15 kilobytes? You can't spare 15 kilobytes. What if we change that to just one? Am I forgetting? What, what have I done? All right. Uh, okay. Let's just print the values separately then. Of course that hangs. Something wrong has happened. I think the heap has moved or something. This isn't looking good, is it? I'm supposed to just have a nice day today. 10 times 15. Okay, so let's look at our compile arguments. Memory small. Yeah, that's what I want. Linker arguments. Is it something to do with my assembly file? Hang on a second. What if we move this from data to const to Did I override the data section or something? What happened here? I think const two is where you put strings and stuff.
No, it still can't malloc things. What if I just undo everything I did here today? What if I just do that, huh? Does that give me back memory? What is wrong with my code? Okay, that kind of works. So, what if at the bottom of the page here, I put group D group text const two. What if I put it there? Oh, that actually caused the weird freeze error. What the? Okay, so let's look at the memory map now. Let's try and find the heap. Where is the heap? Heap. Begin heap. Heap check. You know what we're going to do? We're just going to compare the memory maps. So we're gonna copy, this is broken. So we'll just do bot dot broken or broken map. And then we'll kind of put it back to how it was before. Where I assume it doesn't fail, yeah and then we'll just compare it. Bot dot map broken dot map. Wait, what? What? What happened to D group? D group text begins at one. So all of those are offset by one. Is that important? Let's look for the heap. The heap is at the end with the proper one. What the hell is happening? Okay, this is fine. This is fine. This is fine. Luckily, the NASM forums have opened up. Um, so what we're gonna do now is call for help on the internet. We're gonna use this as an appropriate call a friend situation. Um, if Firefox opens. Um, NASM dgroup Whatcom. Scroll down a little bit. So do I just copy and paste this? Does this help? Of course, that's going to freeze because the code is all kind of broken. Yes, exit, please.
undefined segment. Ooh. Can we just like extern D group? Group D group. What if I just do that? What does that do? And we'll just look at the memory map. That looks bad. We look at the heap. Oh, that looks kind of okay. Could this be it? Um, that didn't crash, but did that fix the issue? I didn't see any echoing. So text is in D group. Wait, no, it's not. D group is for data. Could that be why the things are having bad time for me? Because I've put text in the D group. So what if we do this? What if that was the issue I've grouped in the text? All right, let's go back to DOS and W make it. It does look promising. Um, Perhaps this is it. Let's run bot. And that stops running, I assume, because it didn't run. And that hangs it. So let's see, will this work? Could it be that I just needed to degroup const two into that? I don't know if that even affects the text output. It should. Um, cause Nazan would know where the symbol is in what group. All right. Uh, where's my bot code? Let's remove this junk. Vim bot slash bot dot CPP. It's open in another terminal, of course. Um, and let's W make this and run it. No, maybe. Actually, no, this is good. Um, the format specifier is working. But I think I've switched around some stuff. Let's edit the assembly. I think we fixed it. Um, so let's just randomly switch that around AX and DX. And let's W make this. Fifty four, but it's not printing the packet. So the string is obviously incoming I, so the string here would be AX, which I'm setting to zero. Why? Don't do that. That's not very nice of you.
Uh, it's not nice either. Wait, is that close? I think we have to add an offset to the packet. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so hang on a second. Let's just hack around that by having the bot thing return the bot.cpp return um, the packet with its offset. So current receive packet, current receive packet does return user data. So current receive packet does receive, does return user data, which is an pointer to an int and we'd be casting it to a car and then pushing ax dx which is the size and the print format and that should work but perhaps it's not null terminated i think that's the case here so what we're going to do is to have it output to a file instead that we can check. Um, it did not do that. Got more. How the heck do I pipe this? Is there a print app for limiting stuff? I know what we could do. Let's just overwrite some random memory. Um, so what we can do is, I'll, I'll do that in a bit. I don't want to write any assembly yet. Five nine five one eight. So for some reason, oh, it works now. Huh? That's nice. Did I just forget to like W make it or something? What happened? It didn't work there. I think it's because that's uninitialized memory and yeah. Okay. So we need to terminate the string, but look, we've got it. We've got packet stuff. And we printed it. This is a pretty big milestone. Um, now let's just try and make it so that it doesn't crash stuff when exiting. Um, so I think the problem is that cleanup socket is hanging stuff. Um, so let's just try and see if removing cleanup fixes it. Yeah. That hangs it too. Um, what if we don't run our assembly stuff? No, that causes issues too. Um, Why is this causing like an issue? Hang on a second. Let's try and reduce this to something that should have no effect. And do nothing. So 
So do nothing and then return should do nothing. Might have to comment this all out. Oh, this doesn't return anything. Yeah, this is going to be a void. Okay, so running that causes it to be fine. So let's call setup socket. There, and then see if cleanup socket if we call them in series like this if it has the same effect so that seems fine we should probably add some asserts or something so like um we're not checking if these values are correct and we're not, are we setting sock? What is sock? TCP sock manager, I get socket. What is sock? We'll set that to TCP socket zero. Um, so we'll do if there's a return code there, we'll return that. Um, if there's a return code there, we'll return that. Um, and if If there's no socket, we will return, I guess, one. And then we return the result of sock connect. And that means whenever we run cleanup socket, we definitely will have these things to do. Let's try that. And we shouldn't run cleanup socket if we fail to do that. Okay, so why is that hanging? Let's start, let's add some prints. So it says all X hit quitting, but it is not printing the cleanup thing or assembly done. So could this be that my assembly code is balked? So when we get a zero, push BP, push DX, pop DX, pop BP, move zero AX return. So we push BP and DX at the start, then we pop them. Yeah, 
receive new packet returns a zero. So we will jump to no new and then it will pop DX and BP and it will return. But it evidently is not doing this for some reason. Do I have an unbalanced stack? I think I might. It's not returning. What if we do that? Oh, um, what if we pop something twice? I don't know how many, how printf is putting return stuff for us. What if we just don't do the printf stuff? So we skip printing it. All right, if we skip printing it, that seems to actually work. So my print code must be unbalanced somehow. So let's not print it then. Okay. So printf must be eating something from the stack perhaps. Not too sure. We push AX onto the stack and we push DX and the format. And then we call printf. And then let's say we just quit from then. Yeah, all right, let's try and debug this then. So printf is modifying our stack somehow. So let's do wdbot. Um, and let's run down to, I think it's, what is it? Run, run to cursor is f7, f8. And then we will run over here we have a packet and then if we do window data stack okay so we're going to now do a single step over is it step over it'd be yeah step over or next Okay, so we have a stack and it's at 3972. Wait, did receive packet push something onto our stack? Whatever. I assume that the return code is, oh shit, let's just start over. Restart. Run to there, step into. Okay, so when we enter here, the return address is 4263. Um, then when we get a packet, we have two values on the stack. Yeah, we pushed BP and DX, okay. So this is our stack level. So after all this printf stuff, we should be at um, 3972. 
So let's run, is it just space to go down? Yep. AX, DX, T3972, printf. What? Does printf not consume things on the stack? Pop AX. What? Let's try running bot. Uh, it froze. It froze. Um, so what we're actually going to do is be nasty here and we're going to um, move the stack pointer to the base pointer. And then after that, we're going to move the base pointer to the stack pointer. That doesn't help. All right, that's because it's still, it's closing. Um, it's not exiting the assembly though. Uh, should be base pointer to the stack pointer. <gasps> All right. So I imagine we need to pop AX, um, DX, then AX, and maybe we need to pop another one. I just want to kind of understand this a bit better because it put the return value on the stack. I think it might. So let's try popping again, big pop. I push the print format two onto the stack. All right. So what we're going to do is um, yeah, move the stack pointer to that and then we'll move it back up, we've done printing it. And then we can jump out of the loop. I thought printf consumed its arguments. Oh my God, it works. It works, look. I don't have to close DOSBox all the time anymore. Hallelujah. Praise be. Success. All right, so we want to now try and send the packet back. So AX should have the buffer. Uh, wait, printf will clobber our registers, I think. Yeah, so we want to probably regain those. Um, we don't have any more registers, so we'll just, we'll be nasty like this and do this. So we're just restoring the stuff from the stack. Send packet. So we don't have send packet yet. Send packet. Send new buffer. I think it's that. Let's 
Send new buffer. Let's see if this acts as an echo. Send new buffer is not defined. You're not defined. Send new buffer. Did I not export that? Receive new packet void. Um, that looks fine. Current receive packet, current send buffer. Send new buffer. So we have current send buffer. Oh, we didn't copy it. Or did we? Who cares? We'll just do send new buffer. Int send new buffer. Why is that not being exported? Send, oh, I didn't put the underscore there. So I'm not sure how well this is gonna work because it's really probably clobbering things. <gasps> it says it's sent. Let's see what happens in Wireshark. Um, look back. So let's follow this TCP stream. And it is echoing back. Holy crap. We've made an echo bot. We did it, kind of. Echo, echo, echo. Um, so we have a copy loop there. We don't need that. We don't need to make print format global. Um, did I just delete the group thing that's holding everything apart together? We'll put the um, identify stuff up there and we'll just use section const to here. I want to put the section things up the top there and maybe some other stuff like that. So now the only thing we need to do to finish our little echo bot is we want to have it not overload the terminal with like buffer stuff. See how it puts all this garbage here. Look at that. It's beautiful, but we don't want that garbage. So it's probably, yeah, we're just going to replace the last byte in the packet with, with a, uh, null byte. So this is going to be hack. So AX is the buffer DX equals offset. So we want to combine AX plus DX and put null there. So something like this and I'm not too sure how we're going to do that. So let's open up our docs, Intel, IAPX. Oh, <laughs> right where we left it. Okay. All right. So these are the addressing modes. Feeling pretty good actually about this. So we want to use a double index. So BX, uh, we want to do, we'll, we'll use, I guess, BX and SI. Yeah. I'm not using BX uh, or 
SI. So let's do move BX, sorry, move BX AX and move SI DX. And then we want to specify that it's in the data segment, I guess. DS BX plus SI zero. Would that work? Or does it have to be like written like that? We'll see. I'm not sure what the NASM move syntax is, but that should be fine. Operation size not specified. Um, we're going to move just a, uh, a byte. Just one byte, please. <gasps> Holy shit, that actually worked. What the heck? That worked. What the hell? That worked. Um, and we need to also push the registers BP DX. Uh, we're also doing BX and SI. BP DX, BX and SI. Hang on, let's just search up what call. I just want to find out what registers do we actually have to save? Um, I think it would be in P guide. What call? No. What call? So what is what call? Arguments are processed from left to right, right? All registers must be preserved. Okay then. Can we use a different calling routine? Whatever. Um, I guess we will just have to preserve all the registers. So let's find a list of registers. Um, do we have a list of registers? Registers. Okay, AX, BX, CX, DX, DI, okay. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to push AX, BX, CX, DX, SP, BP, di si 
and then we'll have to pop them in reverse order. So let's reverse that. Do we not have a program in Unix that reverses things? Reverse lines? All right, I guess AX, SI, BX, DI, CX, DP, DX, SP, ABCDB, SDI, ABCDSBDS, ABCDSBDS, a, B, C, D, S, B, D, S. That looks about right. S, P, B, P, D, I, S, I. Yep. There. Is that all the registers? Um, I think so. I think that's all the registers. What? A, B, C, D, S, D, B, S, instruction pointer doesn't count. Then we have the segment registers. Yep. No, it's fine. Yep, 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 yep. Let's W make that and test it. And then our code doesn't have to worry about clobbering registers. We can do what we want. <laughs> It did not work. Um, why did it not work? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. Um, maybe I shouldn't push the stack pointer on and restore it. What the hell? That's a horrible idea. Um, let's drop these other ones and just do A, B, C, D, D, C, B, A. I'm pushing these. These should be pop. Okay, fixed. So we're going to have our entry um, and our exit. We'll change ASM loop to main loop or wait packet, I think. Should I put these declarations in line? No, I'm not going to do that. Let's get the definition of printf here. And we'll change that to no more. And then we will just do terminate string. Wait, no. Um, get new packet address. AX equals um, Packet dx equals size 
terminate packet from printing. Um, print packet. Let's so, uh, registers. Send packet back. And can the sending fail? I need to look more at that, but we probably need to check the return code of sending. Current send buffer. Let's clean up. I have to write that. Um, we have this stuff here. Not going to do that. Remote close quitting. Alt X hit quitting. New packet. Um, we should probably annotate what functions these are from. So receive new packet, remote closed. Receive new packet. Receive new packet. New packet. Len I. There we go. Um, current receive packet, that's just a get function. Current send buffer. Should probably put this up above it. You can see I'm tidying up the code because I, I care about it now. Um, wow, this wrapper isn't actually that bad. You can see now that I'm just going to be putting a whole bunch of print statements everywhere. Um, Okay, current send buffer. What is this for? Oh, so we should be copying it into this buffer. Hmm. Wait, why are we? Huh. Why are we giving an error at current send buffer if the packet is too big? I guess that's just safety. Why are you frowning, cows?
Oh, are you still sad? I'm not sad, I'm actually doing pretty good. This is probably the first DOS stream in a while where I've felt like I have some kind of victory. All right, so we have send buffer sent and then it processes the packets. Um, TCP RC bad. So send new buffer will return a bad value. What if we don't have an XMIT buff? I'm kind of taking that for granted here. Um, we should probably check if send buffer is null. Yeah, we should check if send buffer is null. Um, an error then. In fact, this should set it to null. Let's just do that now. Um, should it? No, that returns zero. All right, I'm just going to put a to do. Should we allocate this here? Because right now we're using a different buffer. And we're not freeing it, are we? Get XMIT buff isn't freeing it. Yeah, I'm removing that for now. Um, and so we do send buffer sent. Um, do we need to process packets there? I don't think so. We do that and receive, oh, why not do it there? Send new buffer. Um, sent packet. Len i, and then we're going to put um, len sent buffer bad error tcp rc bad. Too big. Um, unknown error. There we go. Wait, does enqueuing the buffer mean we have to get another one? I think so. So it would make sense to put this here. Confirm that enqueue um, takes that XMIT buff. 
there we go. So we have some, co uh, some comments here. And I think this is going to be our wrapper. There we go. So we are sending packets of the same size. That's good. And let's just dump the return code there so we can see it. That's pretty good. Look at this. We've solved a lot of problems. Can I clock out early? Is that an option? <laughs> um, let's move the ASM wire to there. Uh, time to hit the sack. Might play some Sonic. Who knows? Um, victories often short lived. Let's do W make clean, and let's copy this to make a backup. Um, yep, and I guess we'll include ASM WAT in our code, maybe not. Um, if I'm backing up the whole bot folder though, so copy bot, we're not using revision control yet. Um, which is worrying. So what should we do about that? Now that things are getting serious. Um, I don't know what bot dot old is. Oh, this is really old stuff. This is very old. That's ancient stuff. Um, then we have 2021. Let's mark this as 2022 0108. Um, and we just have bot old here. Uh, when was this made? December 25, got it. Um, 12.05. And what's bot com from? Where are you from, buddy? Oops. No, 13, 2021. November's the 11th, isn't it? And bot dot old here is from October. So that would be 10, 20. Don't do version control like this, okay? There's better tools for it. I forgot what, I think it was the 20th for that one. Yeah, don't do this, bad. 
All right. Um, rubbish. Empty all that. Maybe we should do some egg code stuff. Dunno. Maybe I'll just work on installing Linux or something. DOS log. All right. That's the file. Um, DW, what's this? Oh, that's Kodo stuff. Menu.py. And curses downloads. I'll worry about this later. Documents desktop. So we can, we could do a little bit of egg code. I know you've been writing some of the egg code. You know what we could do? We could try getting egg code to run in the browser. <laughs> Would that be cool? All right, I'm cutting this stream short. Sorry, my loyal DOSBot VOD people, but this might be the peak. This could be the peak of our DOSBOT series. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry.